Good morning, hello, my name's Andy, I'm from Wally Club, and today I'm here at Batman with Richard. Nice to see you Andy. Thanks for being here, Richard. No problem. So you're the communications manager? That's right. At Batman? Yeah. So what's, what's sort of your role? So that involves uh, liaising with the press, um, getting any news out there about new products, product announcements, um, any launches we might do at shows or any um, promotions like the club lounge we'll have at the Wally show. So. Um, looking after that, making sure our members know about it so they can come along and enjoy that. Um, we can go into detail on that a bit later on maybe. That'd be good. Um, producing the Batman Times for the Batman Collectors Club members, I'm the editor of that as part of the role. Um, so bringing in articles about Batman products and the wider railway modelling and railway interests to combine into a magazine for our members four times a year. Um, and doing things like this where we, we hopefully give you an insight into Batman and uh, what we do, why we do it. and. Uh, why we'll uh, continue to try our best to do the great models you see in front of us, well, behind us today. That's brilliant. It's really nice of you to invite us. Thank you. So, can we have a quick chat about your involvement in Wally and Batman's involvement with Wally? And certainly, yeah. So, I've been with Batman for coming up to seven years now. Um, long before that, Batman had been um, proud sponsors of the Wally Show. I remember going as a child and um, buying a Graham Farish locomotive just after Batman had bought Graham Farish. I think that was my starting point in end scale. I've modelled or played trains all my life yeah. um, with an old door with a circular track on that my dad built and progressed from there. So, a bit of a, a lifelong railway modeller. Um, going to the Wally show was always sort of a highlight of the, the year, a good day out. Um, so, when I joined the company, it was obviously great to see Perfect. it from the, the other side um, and giving that excitement to the people that visit your show. So That's good. Thank you, thank you for the support. No, we're, we're proud to support it and uh, it's a great advert for the hobby. Um, particularly at the minute with the Great Model Railway Challenge, that's something that is going to obviously have the, the winning layout at your show. Absolutely. And we were really glad to be able to bring the winning layout last year and have that part of our, part of our stand uh, from the first series. So it was certainly we saw it as a draw to the event uh, for the wider community, families, children, things like that. And your kids for a quid. Um, incentive is also a great means to get those families and children through the door. Yeah, we noticed a big upturn with the, the younger members at, uh, and uh, visitors last year. A massive amount of uh, sort of under you know under sixteen year olds coming along, which which is great. Which is great for the hobby. Definitely, it's the future of the hobby. Absolutely, um, you need to get a diverse cross section of the the people that will hopefully buy our products in the future, um, interested and from an early stage. Get them hooked early. Inspire them to, to model um, whilst also looking after those people that are already um, modelers themselves or got that interest and, and want to either continue or sometimes rekindle um, an interest from their own childhood. Richard, put that model down, will you? Oh, I'm sorry, but, you know. That's mine, isn't it? Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll get away with it. Who knows? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's beautiful. So we've got Richard, member of Wally Club, with us to help us today. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for inviting me, Andy. Thank you for coming. You know, it's um, not every day you get a chance to, to come to Backman and you know see borrow, all sorts. Borrow items. <laughs> yeah, borrow items. I've got the rest of it over there. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe Richard's a bit of a YouTube. Sensation, sensation. So, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Nice to meet you, Richard. Yeah. Pleasure. So, as well as being a Wally Club member, I understand you're a bit of a YouTube star. Uh, so they say. Yeah, <laughs> I've made the odd video or two um, with many Batman products on uh, quite a few occasions. Great. So it's uh, it's a real privilege to to be invited here today um, as part of the Wally Club and have a look at some of the forthcoming releases, um, in particular some of the first generation DMUs. Yeah, well, we've got lots coming through at the yeah, moment on that uh, front. So plenty for you to. Uh, yeah. Have a look at. Oh, it's great. So I've got, I've got some fantastic shots already. <laughs> um, so uh, I've got a couple of questions myself. Um, so has Backman always been here in, in Leicestershire in Barwell? Yes. So the premises we're in um, today is where Batman started back in 1989. Uh, so the company's been going for 30 years. 30 years. Um, there's an association with the area before that, um, right. whereby Palitoy, which was based in Colville, yep. they um, introduced the mainline railways range okay. um, during the 1970s. Um, those products were made by Kader, Batman's parent company. Oh, I see. Okay, so, uh, so yeah. made in Hong Kong at the time. Yep. Um, they, Palatoy, decided to uh, to end the mainline railways brand yes. um, for commercial reasons, I believe. Okay. And that was during the 1980s. Yep. Um, so Kader had this tooling to make 
great models like the class 45 yeah of course four mt mark mm -hmm. coaches um, but had no way of getting it to the customer i see so there's no outfit to actually exactly. to move that product okay. yeah so Cada already owned the batman trains american brand yes of course uh, so it had the batman name which was associated with model railways yeah so you've um, already got some recognition i suppose exactly there. Yeah. yeah so they set up Batman Europe, and that was um, through Graham Hubbard, who lived yep. in the area, right. hence the location. I see, okay. Um, Graham had been importing the Batman Trains products into the UK for sale at shows and swap meets, so okay. he was known to Batman and Cader. Right. Um, so Graham was chosen through that reason. I see. Uh, the name was chosen from the, the association with railways already. Um, and Batman Europe began 1989, and we're right. proud, proud to be here still. So sort of quite later. a complex sort of range of things sort of coming yeah. together, but ultimately that's where that's right. That's yeah, where quite a, came from. quite a few different elements to the story. Yeah. Um, we also from that era gained Merle Evans, who was our lead designer right. for um, I believe from sort of 1994 until okay. 2015 when he retired. Um, right. Merle had been the gentleman responsible for mainline railways at Palatoy. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Nice little story. He was um, working on things like Action Man. Right. Um, Palatoy didn't do trains. And so they're more sort of toy. Focused. Yeah, more yeah. toy. Action Man, things like that. Okay. Um, and the boss at Palatoy saw on Merle's desk a railway modeler. Right. Called him into his office. Do, do you like model railways? Oh, yeah. It's my, uh, it's my hobby. <laughs> um, so Merle was from that day tasked with producing this range of right, railways, okay. what should we make, how do we make it? That's, that's really interesting because I got into model railways because of a random copy of Railway Modeler, <laughs> the same sort of thing. Yeah, so, very it's, interesting. Uh, it's a great hobby to, to be a oh, part Oh, absolutely, of. I love it. And there's so many different elements to it. Absolutely, uh, you know, you've got electrics research, history, do you, you know, woodworking, yeah. painting, um, working with plastics, working with uh, metal, um, working with paint, working with adhesives. It, it, it encompasses so many different things. And it's just, I, I wouldn't do anything else. That's right, it's, uh, it's a great hobby to be a part yeah. of. Love okay, uh, got a couple of sort of more general questions, uh, if you wouldn't mind answering a few Fire of those. Away, Richard. Um, I saw recently um, BRM magazine visited on your uh, one of your many uh, container delivery days. Um, and it was very interesting to see, obviously, the quality control process that is put into the the batch when it arrives to make sure that it is fit for sale. Um, something that crossed my mind while I was watching it was what happens to all of those models that are unboxed? Are they simply put back in their boxes and sold on as part of the main range or do they go into say the spares market or? They, they join the, the rest of the products. They do join is, the rest uh, of the products. Going to the warehouse with dispatch to the cool. retailers. Yeah. Well it would make sense because obviously you're unboxing a significant portion of the main batch. Yes. I was just curious as to what happened. Yeah so I mean every item is handled many times in China. Mm, um, every stage of the production process had its own QC yes. checks. Um, so we're just doing that final yes. check to make sure we're happy with yeah, the, the end result. Um, and obviously our staff are well trained in oh, of course. the correct handling methods. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And for the end consumer, if they end up with that model, mm. uh, there's probably even more confidence well, that it's been yeah. checked well, for them before they um, get it. That's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, obviously, when you purchase a, a Backman model, it, it, it has been checked. Um, but you may actually end up with one that's got a couple of miles under its belt, has already been run in, already been scrutinised, mm -hmm. so you know that that particular one is going to be really, really good. Yeah, maybe not <laughs> so, a couple of miles. Yeah. But, uh, well, yeah, obviously it's all your, um, your, your test tracks, so yes. some of the models do get tested. And yeah, stuff, there's so. certainly, uh, there's, yeah. there's ruined tests, there's yeah. um, checks on the decoration, um, detail parts, things like Something that. I've noticed um, over the past few years myself has been affected by it. Um, sometimes you like to the party. Um, you've missed out on whatever product it might be, they're not in stock anymore, the batch has sold out, and then you're at the mercy of the second-hand market yes. or the uh, Backman return stand <laughs> if you can get to it. Um, is there, uh, do, do you monitor uh, perhaps the second-hand market to see what discontinued items are in demand? Does it perhaps influence perhaps a rerun of, say, Mark 1 coaches, for example? We'll be aware of what's going on um, in the market on a sort of wider level. Of course. We won't take um, eBay price, I think that is gospel. Yeah, I suppose that's that's quite unreliable, I would have thought. Yeah, two people wanting the same products is going to end Absolutely. up with a bidding war. Um, yeah. Once that person has, has, well, the winner has got that item, yeah. the second person will probably get 
the next one for pennies. Yeah. And it's interesting you say that because that has happened to me. You've yes. been in a bidding war for whatever <laughs> it might be and you go, oh, I've missed out. And then a week later you get it for £30 cheaper. Yeah. So perhaps not reliable data, but uh, it is interesting how some products do just fly off the shelves and then others are a little bit more of a, yeah, a slow exactly. burner. I mean, it's a, a good example is the C-Class um, that we released yes, in the fully ornate oh, beautiful. green livery yeah. um, in 2013. Mm -hmm. And that was a real beautiful model yeah. um, and people probably didn't model the SECR but saw it and thought I need that yeah, for my Saw collection. it, saw the lining yeah. was like I could have So one they flew off the shelves um, and then the eBay prices were extraordinary yes. <laughs> uh, and we always told people that look with rising prices in China and mm -hmm. um, there's so much assembly and yep. particularly decoration on that model um, that pr to produce it again would be a higher of course, retail price yeah, than of course. the um, yeah, quite the more tampo bargain passes. sort of uh, price that it went out at back in 2013, yeah. and people said, "No, it's fine. I'll pay it. I've seen one for eBay for 500 pounds." So we've <laughs> we've finally sort of given into demand and said, "Well, yeah. there's so many people say they they want it, and they'll." Yeah. So sometimes there is means to, to justify perhaps yes. that other run, even yeah. if costs have changed exactly. since that original release of, of whatever. Yeah, model we, it might we be. have to be careful to be seen that we're listening to consumers mm -hmm. and our customers, but we also have to. Um, make sensible business decisions. Of course, because yeah. if we bring it out and it costs five hundred pounds and no one buys it, then that's yeah. not um, no. a good thing. That's not a business. sound business decision, is it? So, exactly. You know, and then ultimately that hurts the range in the future yeah, for the rest of us. We can't invest in other things that we'd like to or not as quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so it has an impact on other areas, not just the fact that we have some C classes sat on the yeah. shelf. And of course, it's it's not just model trains, is it? I mean, there are other production slots to consider, other things to consider. You yeah. can't always just keep knocking out. Um, C-classes. That's right. Yeah. yeah, there's such a wide area of interest for all modelers mm. uh, through different areas, different geographical locations, yeah. um, and catering for everyone all the time is very hard. Yeah, I imagine it would. <laughs> yeah. Especially obviously, when, yeah. obviously, you produce on a batch. Yes. Yeah, so it's very difficult to go, oh, people want that. But uh, we've all, we, we did it six months ago. Yeah. You know, the people who model um, whatever it might be need their turn. Yeah, uh, exactly. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. okay, and last question from me. Um, obviously, many of the models that uh, Backman produce, all of the models, um, have a huge amount of work, time, and effort that go into you know bringing them to the market. Um, we've seen some fantastic models over the last few years: the, the C Class, the Class 90, the Backman Freightliner flat container wagons, um, birdcage coaches, etc., yeah. etc. Et um, what would you say is Backman's proudest achievement to date? What model had the most? You know, most effort was the most challenging to get to final production. I think the model that's out there now would be the Blue Pullman. Of course. Um, so yeah. an iconic six car train. Yeah, that's the six cars, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. there's so much detail going into that model. Um, there's nothing surviving. No. Well, there's a few bits. We've got a set of chairs in the warehouse. Right, there. set of chairs, brilliant. They're stored outside, so you wouldn't yeah. want to sit on them. But um, there's very little physical yeah. evidence there of the real train so no. we've had to really work from the ground up for all well it's two sets of three essentially so yeah. three complete vehicles yes. um, working from scratch and that was sort of a real um, yeah. crown to, to Batman's range. Absolutely I imagine the research was at points like how are we going to do this I mean there's, the, there's um, a British transport film of the real thing. Yes that but helps. It's, absolutely and it's all on test and you can get certain bits and pieces from that but in terms of sound of the real thing yeah very limited um, and i imagine most of the vehicles in that train are unique um, to a certain level so obviously you've got a six car train but you've got two power cars and then there's going to be differences between all yeah. the various coaches yeah so. it's essentially two halves of three yeah three so, car sets. so three three coaches in, in essence to really um get the detail right Absolutely. on. It was something where we could engage with our collectors club members right? and we could ask them for any research material they, they of, might have. Of course, I suppose, because many of the customers uh, ultimately might be purchasing the model, yes. um, will have very useful photographs potentially from yeah. their spotting days. They may have recollections of travelling on it from yep. uh, the, the days of BR and also one of the key features we were trying to get right was the colour of the seats because we right. knew that um, there was two colours used okay. but it was unclear as to where they were used oh, in I the see. formation of the was it a sort of half and half pattern yep. or were yeah was it divided amongst class or or whatever so yes, exactly. yeah i imagine 
And I suppose you could apply that to uh, most of the more historic um, prototypes that you produce models of. If it's if it's just, I mean, for example, a, a class uh, 70, you can just go out there and 3D scan the real thing. Yeah. And it's still a lot of work. But obviously, if it's like C-class or, or something that there really isn't that much material on, it's a lot harder. No, we obviously can go and talk to people in preservation where mm -hmm. things like the C-class still exist, exactly, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of the time, those groups will have a lot of research themselves. Yeah, I suppose so for the, uh, I imagine the restoration work that they would have done, they would have yeah. had to research the prototype themselves in order to be able to, to repair it, to yeah. fix it. We take a lot of pride in getting the detail right, of course. Um, as do preservationists, so they yeah. want to make sure that the inside cab of their mm. C-class is the right shade of cream and things like that, of so course, yeah. we can gain a lot of help Very in that respect. But looking ahead, um, the breakdown crane, which is coming out at the end of this year. Yeah, absolutely. I was having a little play with it just on the table. That could so. be competing. Yeah. So we'll, we'll it's see. It's surprising the weight that you've got into that. Yes. It's, you go to push it, and there's a lot of weight in the model. It's, uh, it's incredible. Yeah, it's got some great play, play value. Yeah, definitely. Um, the, I mean, the beauty of the, the Blue Pullman is we could give that to both N and O scale modelers. Yes. So it, we obviously have a, a a large selection of N scale models in of our Grand Forest range. Yeah, of course. And it's nice to be able to say this sort of headline model mm. was available to everyone. Yeah, be uh, able to. The crane making that operate in N scale would be yeah. uh, a task <laughs> that is even greater than anything we've faced before. I Absolutely, so, yeah. I certainly wouldn't want that to land <laughs> on my desk on Monday morning. <laughs> so um, there's th obviously that's not something we've uh, got in the, the range at the moment. Of course but, not. Um, we always listen to what people say and what they want yeah. and, and see what can be, be done about it. So. Fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting me along. No problem. Nice to meet you questions. and uh, I hope we'll, we'll see you again at the Wally I'll, Show. Yeah, I will see you at the Wally Show, absolutely. I shall be um, that bloke stood at these <laughs> glass cabinets taking pictures again. Okay, so we had our sponsors meeting a uh, different month, which you were invited to and you come along. Great, uh, great to see all the leading manufacturers involved. What's your thoughts on uh, and Batman's interactions with the other companies? Uh, well, it's obviously a, a wide industry um, with several manufacturers like Hornby, Daypole, Helgen, etc., and um, producing models all for the same end goal, really. Um, and like you're aware, at the sponsors' meeting, there's a good relationship there between uh, different companies: Pico, Hornby, Batman, etc. Um, and it's a uh, we're always happy to have the name Hornby mentioned as much as it can be because that is what a child thinks if they want to buy a train set they think Hornby. Yeah. The more Hornby train sets that are enjoyed, uh, the more chance there is of a, a child or and moving um, on. adults even thinking, right, yeah, we want to get into this hobby, let's go to Wally Show, see what it's all about. Um, and then we have the opportunity to introduce them to our brand and our products and uh, take it from there really. Uh, one of the other questions we get, we seem to see here a lot about is is about colours and use of colours on, uh, especially if you're buying, say, a Batman Mark, uh, Class 47 and a DBSO, and then you end up with Oxford Mark 3s and Hornby Mark 3s. Is there any sort of thought in sort of having a standardised colour system across the whole of the, uh, across everyone's sort of brand, or is it? Uh, colours are very subjective, so what you think is right might be wrong, and what I think is wrong might be right. Yeah. Um, there's very much down to individual perception. Um, our artwork team work really hard to select the correct colours to go onto the models, um, and we work closely with our production facility in China uh, to ensure consistency uh, across the models, whether it's a class 47 or a class 37. If the real thing was painted in the same colours, we should aim to paint our models in the same colours. Of course, not all real things were painted in the same colours. Even Mark 1 coaches in Crimson Cream might have been different shades at different yeah. times. Um, but we do see that modellers like consistency, whether that's totally accurate or not. Um, so it's a, it's a tough decision to make. Do we strive for 100% accuracy, which is generally our approach, um, or do you sort of make something that matches something else? Um, and our policy is more towards making something that's right, um, because if everyone makes something that's wrong, then the, no one wins. Everything is wrong. Yeah. So the Open Day that's was good. back in July, back when we were invited, along with uh, Scarborough Scenery and uh, RM Babe coming along. What was your thoughts on the day? Very, uh, very good day, yes. I've never been to the Wally premises myself, so it was a, a nice insight into what your club get up to 
um, the rest of the year, not just November at the NEC. Um, it was obviously an honour to be asked to judge the diorama contest that you ran. Um, seeing some good feedback online on your various YouTube videos and your contributors on that. So that was nice to uh, be involved with. And it's yeah, certainly a, a good club that's got a lot of engagement from the, the, the wider community. Uh, great to see a lot of families there. The standards were good, weren't they, for the uh, diorama? Yeah, the, the guys had a matter of hours to complete something that uh, they all ended up looking top class. Absolutely. So it was a bit of a challenge to, um, to judge. make the final call on that one. Absolutely. But and we, we made uh, just over £200 for charity. That's great. Which was great. We did yeah. all parts of the day and we've still got the one diorama left which we're going to have at the Waller Show this year. Well, I'm sure so people will come along to I'm not sure it. where it's going to be, but it's going to be, and hopefully we'll auction off a bit more money going to charity. Great. But really appreciate the support you give us at the club and the, the donation of the, the Woodland Scenic products, which was, yeah, which was, it was really appreciated. Nice to see them being and shown being to used the public how to use them. Yeah, and the um, how-to kits, which were... Yeah, and the, 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 the stamps so, that were presented at the end of the day were really... A credit to the guys involved. So well done. That's brilliant. Thanks okay, for so your Richard. Uh, last year's show at Wally was a record attendance. Attendance figures up. So it's a really good future for shows. Uh, hopefully, going to continue this year. Another increase. Certainly, yeah. We we look forward to continuing our association with the Wally Show. Um, 2019 looks set to be a good one once again. Um, we we spoke about earlier the Great Mill Railway Challenge and how that probably had a a positive impact on attendance at Worley and, uh, and shows following that as well. Um, so we've got the series running again, um, just finishing in time for the Worley show and there's some promotion of that in the show. So hopefully um, even better results this year. Absolutely. Um, obviously it's not just Worley show that Batman support. We go to the London Festival of Rowing Modelling at Alexandra Palace with our stand, large stand, the same as um, that that comes to Worley. And we have a more mobile stand on a smaller scale that goes to other events around the country to spread our support around other clubs and associations um, who we're there to support our customers that are selling at the show so they might have our product on their sales stand but we can show it off in our cabinets in a yeah. nicer way hopefully and also to take feedback and questions from our customers so it's important to support these events and, and be out there yeah we're proud to do so uh, and we look forward to continuing to be out there at uh, future events we'll that's guys wall up very soon yeah it's very getting closer now <laughs> and don't forget you can see the winning uh, layouts from the great model railway challenge at the waller show this year on the 23rd and 24th of november we'll see you okay then. uh so we'll talk a little bit about the backman collectors club um, I myself uh, a little bit curious because uh, I've been at your stand on various shows on the outside <laughs> pressed up against the glass going, what have I got in there um what what benefits are there from becoming a member of the Backman Collectors Club? What uh, what goes on? So, like I say, the club lounge, that's something club we take lounge. to the uh, Wally Show and the London Festival of Rowing Modelling. Right. So it gives our members a space where they can um, interact a bit more um, in a relaxed setting with some of our staff, um, asking questions um, about the products that we're bringing forward, um, giving them suggestions to what they'd like to see. Okay. Um, we obviously have that on... Um, the, the outside of the stands for of course, the general yeah. public as well um, but they'll be able to sort of have that relaxed environment so it's a little bit more personal perhaps yes very much so yeah. and we also like to keep our members up to date first with what is coming through the development process of course so models that have reached a, a physical sample stage a engineering prototype yep. um, will be displayed in the lounge first okay. um, and then at future events they'll be available to a wider audience um, so in the lounge itself you've got those aspects and we also will look to have sort of demonstrations right, um, so okay. members can get involved. So Again, you, can, you can actually get hands on perhaps with some yes, of the stuff. Yeah, right. maybe using some of the wooden scenics materials. Uh, again, it just gives that atmosphere and that mm -hmm. environment to allow that to, to happen. Yeah. Whereas on the outside of the stand you might have 20 people all trying yeah, to course. ask the same question well, in the what, same area. That's what I was going to say. I mean, I've gone to various manufacturers' stands and I've stood there and looked and gone, uh, I won't bother and just moved on and I'll just uh, try and find out the answer to my question yeah. over the next few months or whatever it might be um, so that level of engagement I suppose with your with your members is, is really useful in that exactly respect. yeah so we, we obviously have that facility for mm -hmm. the general public but for those that want to engage a bit further yeah. or on a, a different level then they have the option through the the members lounge cool. at the shows um, that's just a 
small part of the package really. Of course, yeah. So we do the Batman Times magazine, that's right. uh, four times a year, quarterly publication, okay. 64 pages, and that will include the latest news from Batman. Mm -hmm. So the samples you're seeing at the members' lounge yeah. will be printed off in Oh, so, so you can see the journey that's been made perhaps to Exactly. Reach. We call it the works report. Right. Um, so we'll detail the stages at which products that have been announced mm -hmm. and are currently in development are currently at. Yep. Um, so there might be CADing, uh, sorry, CAD images in there. Okay. Uh, there might be photographs of the EPs or yep. there might be the livery samples and right through to production. So, so you, you, can, you get the whole story. In yeah, effect. you can follow the journey of each model. Obviously, different models will have different Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, I'm biased there. for a start. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, we, we cover both N and O scale in that yeah. manner. Uh, we also look at things like EFE and scene craft, which people might not always it notice. Yeah, it doesn't come straight to your mind, perhaps, but it's still an important part of the range. That's right. I mean, how many model railways have a bus on a bridge? It's just yeah, it's every single traditional. one. <laughs> and then around the corner from that bridge is a scene craft low relief building. That's right. So we. Batman as a whole try to produce um, a complete range to take you from. Yeah your initial steps to a complete, fully scenic model railway. Of course. And the Batman Times tries to um, guide you through that in some way. Yeah. We have modelling articles using the wooden scenics and the right. scene okay. products yep. um, from well-respected modellers. Of course. Uh, we have historic articles and prototype articles, so you can be, if you wish to, you can um, learn more about yeah. why that train ran in that area or why that locomotive pulled that type of coach of course. Um, and we try to cover that in a... Yeah, um, that, that's of particular interest to me. I find the whole prototype research very interesting. You could spend hours just trying to find out what sort of formation your 47 should have pulled on the 23rd of February 1986. But if someone's doing the work for you and it's there in print with photographs and everything, it's like, oh brilliant, I can do this, I can do that. Very handy. Very much so and mm. it's about showing people that the products can be used to get yeah sort of exhibition standard results without a lot of um, hassle really yeah. and like you say where it's the research side it's showing people how you can take our products and make an accurate train of course. or something that is resembles yeah, an accurate train. A lot of people I think are sort of trying to do that you, you might have the train set and, and enjoy the first stages of the hobby but then when you start to get a little bit more serious those sorts of questions are going to need answers. What sort of train should I run? What era am I modelling? You know, what sort of um, freight would have moved through the area? Things like that. So yeah. I've always been a big fan of prototype articles and research like that. So yeah. it's good to see. We have to be careful not to get too... I, you you it. can get a bit too serious, <laughs> absolutely. Well, again, you know, you've got to appeal to the yeah. to the wider audience. And at the end of the day, if someone wants to put a steam engine in front of their Mark II F coaches, oh, then rule one as applies. A, as long as they're enjoying what they're doing, that's yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's rule one. First rule of model railways: run whatever you <laughs> like, and then if you get serious, you can start to look into other avenues of uh, making things a bit more realistic. Yeah, but, but it's, it's good fun to get yeah. there. But that's what's great, it's it's something for everyone. Yeah, so you get obviously the Batman Times, mm -hmm. um, entry to the members lounge. We do a membership wagon for our members, so right. that's changed every year, it's yep. commissioned especially for them, so you okay. can't buy in the shops. No, okay. Um, you'll get a membership card and a membership pin badge. Right. Membership card is quite important to get into the lounge. Yes, I suppose <laughs> it would be, yes. <laughs> we do a calendar for our members. Nice. Uh, we run a photographic competition and those photographs Right. Um, end up a bit like the country farm. Yeah, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Um, the photographs will be used for the calendar. Okay. So all very uh, quite challenging to judge when yeah, uh, the competition closes. Yeah, so I'm we sure. Bring in various people who are sort of respected for their yeah. photographic pedigree. Yeah. Um, but it's always a, a tough ask because yeah, we have some great entries. Of course. Um, we let our customers have sorry, our club members. They get the catalogue before anyone else. Oh, okay. Um, so the annual catalogues yeah. there, they're yeah, sent out that. direct to our club members. And we also produce a range of limited edition models. Um, yes. So again, something we showcase at the shows, uh, like Wally. Uh, limited editions produced just for members. Yep. Each is certified. Um, we cover both N and O scale. Of course. Um, not always the same model in no, both scales. No. Um, there can be some tooling we might have in one scale and not the other. Of course. Or there might be something we've done in the main range for one scale and it doesn't quite fit yeah. for the other scale, so we do it. Yeah, of in, course. In the yeah. Uh, or you know, livery variations of something yes. that's in the main range. Yeah, so um, lots of reasons to be a member. And cool. maybe the, the icing on the cake is our members' day. That right. takes place at a 
Heritage Site or Preserve Railway okay. every year. Yep. Uh, we were actually at the Langothan Railway just uh, a week or two ago for the 2019 event. Wow. Um, and that's a, a free day out, so really Brilliant. worth the membership fee alone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, a free day out at Heritage <laughs> Railway. I mean, yeah, you know. so yeah. you get your train rides, we give yep. you a free pat lunch, and you get behind the scenes access. Of course. So yeah. the, the premise of the day is giving our members something they couldn't get if they mm -hmm. just visited that railway as a general visitor. Okay. A bit like the members lounge. Yeah, of course, yeah. You've got that, it's that on sort exclusive of a, access. The biggest scale, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, so tours of the loco works, tours of carriage sheds, wherever. Each railway has different facilities. Of course, yeah, but you usually can't visit those very easily. No, I um, mean, Langothan's a great case in point because the carriage works are something like a mile away from the station. Course. So we had to have a DMU taking our members from right. Hang off them down to yeah, the drop them off, and obviously you know, there's yeah. health and safety concerns is when you're there on the day yes. as a normal customer. You can't just walk into the shed and stuff like that. So Very just to be so. able to look at the restoration work being done for me alone would be worth it. Yeah, and again, inspiration to models as well. Of course, absolutely. Um, and we're obviously really grateful for the railways that help us host these events yeah. for facilitating such. Uh, not a strange request, but it's strange not request. it's not an everyday occurrence. No, I mean, of course it isn't. 150 no. club members turn up at your Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. and they all want to walk around. You're like, um, okay, right, with that, we need to get rid of that. That needs to move away. That needs to move that. Someone's going to fall over that. So, yeah, a lot of logistics, yeah. I imagine. If we have visitors here, we have to obviously make sure anything confidential is uh, of course. tucked away. Yeah. We take members to a railway, they have to make sure any trip yeah. hazards are tucked away. So Absolutely. It's a yeah. similar thing, but on a, okay. a grander scale. Oh, brilliant. Well, thanks for answering the question. Certainly got me curious. That's our. our Take a picture and uh, put it on the stand at Worley so yep. when you walk by, they're yep. going to sign you up. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Hello. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video that uh, our Secretary Andrew Hudson, our YouTube Supremo, has put together uh, of his visit with Richard of Everard Junction to Backman at Barwell. We, of course, would particularly like to thank David Harhouse, Managing Director of Backman, and also Richard Proudman, their Marketing Manager, for their time. Um, given to us in the pres preparation of the video and during our visit there. Thank you both very much. Backman have been long-time supporters of the Warley Club and the Warley Show and we would certainly like to thank them for all their time and effort over the years, 27 or 28 now, and for their great support for the club and our hobby. So thank you everyone and thank you for watching and look forward to the next one. Thank you. <laughs>